From Asuksa in the east to Shibuya in the west, and everything in between. The Ginza line has been serving Tokyo for almost a century, but it almost didn't work out this way. This is the story of the Ginza line, a tale of two underground lines that would become Tokyo's first subway line. The Ginza line was the vision of entrepreneur Noritsugu Hayakawa, who has come to be known in the Japanese history books as the father of the Tokyo subway system. Hayakawa was inspired to create the underground subway for Tokyo after returning from a trip from the United Kingdom in 1914 and riding the London underground system there. He established the Tokyo Subway Company in 1920 and construction commenced on the first segment of the line on September the 27th, 1925 after raising the necessary funds to kickstart the project. The line ran from the bustling Asakusa Temple and Entertainment District on the shores of the Sumida River, 2.2 kilometers west to Weno Station. The section had two stops along Asakusa Avenue and would cost 4 million yen per mile to construct or roughly 2.4 billion yen in today's money. The line opened on the 30th of December 1927 and even though trains were departing every three minutes, it was reported that people waited in line for two hours to experience the five minute subterranean journey. The next two years would be dedicated extending the line 1.7 kilometers to the temporary Mansei Bashi station, just next door to Akihabara station and in front of the Kanda River. The extension would also host two other stations in between. Mansei Bashi station would only be open for one year and 11 months, as construction works continued on the other side of the Kanda River. The station exists today only as a phantom station, and commuters, if they're quick, may be able to catch a glimpse of its small platforms as the trains pass through. The only part of the station in use today is an inconspicuous air vent on the sidewalk that blows a warm breeze out as the Ginza Line train passes by below. The next year, on the 1st of November 1931, the line would be extended another 500 metres under the Kanda River, creating a new stop at Kanda Station, linking it with the Japan National Railway Station. Then, just six months later, in April 1932, another 700 metres section would open to Mitsukoshimai. The construction method used for the entire line was called cut and cover which involved heavy machinery hammering long steel beams into the ground to prevent the sides of the new tunnel from collapsing in. Once the beams for the new wall were in place, men with picks and shovels hand dug out the dirt before adding in generous amounts of concrete to form the tunnel itself. Once this was complete, what was left of the tunnel was filled in and the road above resealed. In the final days of 1932, Another 1.3 km section of the line opened between Mitsukoshimai and Kyobashi, bringing the total length of the line opened in 1932 to 2 km. This section of the line would run south along Chodori Avenue and passing Tokyo Station on the east side. The Ginza line would use the 1000 series rail cars, which had a distinct yellow coloured body and maroon roofs. The American-made motors enabled the 1000 series to reach speeds of over 70 km per hour and their bodies were made of steel to reduce the risk of fires. Power was delivered via a third rail and the interior carriage lighting was quite dim when compared to today's standards. 1934 would see the first half of the Ginza line completed when the final 1.3 km section opened between Kyobashi and Shinbashi with Ginza station in between. Shinbashi would be a terminal station, with its platforms being located under the east side of the elevated Yamanote line tracks. It took the Tokyo Subway Corporation nine years and nine months to complete the eight kilometer section from Asakusa to Shinbashi. The original 1920 subway plan by Tokyo City called for the subway line to stretch beyond Shinbashi and finish in Shinagawa, another five kilometers to the south. As fate would have it, the Tokyo High Speed Rail Company headed by entrepreneur Keita Goto and headquartered on the other side of town in Shibuya was eager to acquire a subway license of its own. With strong financial backing and a promised plan to halve construction time, it persuaded Tokyo City to transfer the remaining part of Subway License 1 from Hayakawa's Tokyo Subway Corporation 
Togoto's Tokyo High Speed Rail Company. At the same time, the city also issued a license for Subway Line 3, which would start from Shibuya and would run 6.3 kilometers to Shinbashi. So, in December 1935, the Tokyo High Speed Rail Company commenced construction of the new line. The company's strategy was to break the new line into three construction zones and then join them up into one single line when complete, significantly reducing the construction time. Section one between Shibuya, the new terminal, and Omoto Sando would be 1.1 kilometers long and would feature the only above ground section on the entire Ginza line. Due to Shibuya being located in a valley, a 400 meter long viaduct would have to be built to transport trains to Shibuya station. The platforms would be located on level three, high enough to make it over the Yamanote line. Section two between Omoto Sando and Akasaka Mitsuke spanned 2.75 kilometers down Aoyama Dori Avenue and past Akasaka Imperial property. Akasaka Mitsuke's platforms were vertically stacked they were built this way because it was envisaged by Keita Goto that a branch subway line would be built from Shinjuku and meet with the Ginza line at Akasaka Mitsuke Station. From here they would form a single track before entering central Tokyo at Shinbashi in a Y-shaped configuration. But the branch line would never go ahead as planned and the adjacent platforms would be used to stable trains for the next 21 years until 1959 when the Marunouchi line would come into service. After opening, the Ginza line would prove to be a huge success, and the original five meter wide platforms were not enough to cater for the huge swells in commuter numbers, and would later have to be widened to 15 meters when the Marunouchi line would come into service. Akasaka Mitsuke Station would be wildly successful as a transfer station, as passengers simply dashed from one platform to the next to transfer between lines. At the same time, Section three between Akasaka Mitsuke and Toranomon, which spanned 1.5 kilometers, was completed. And on the 18th of November, 1938, sections two and three spanning a combined 4.4 kilometers opened to the public, bringing the subway to the west side of Tokyo for the first time. Then, just four weeks later, on December 20th, 1938, the Western Terminal section would open for service between Shibuya and Omoto Sando, increasing the length of the line to 5.5 kilometers. The Tokyo High Speed Rail Company would use the 100 series rolling stock, of which 30 cars would be built and manufactured by the Kawasaki Vehicle Company, known today as Kawasaki Heavy Industries. The vehicle's shape and body of the train would be modeled on the 1000 series and would also feature all steel bodies painted in dark green and cream color. They are equipped with 475 kilowatt electric motors, which made them more powerful than the 1000 series. However, its interior was quite basic when compared to the wood grain finishes and plush green seats of their Tokyo subway counterparts. In 1948, the cars were painted yellow as one of the unification measures implemented by the government controlled Taito Rapid Transit Authority. As 1939 was ushered in, the Ginza line's missing link was completed when the 800 meter long section between Toranomon and Shinbashi would enter into service on January the 15th. However, the two lines weren't directly connected and Shinbashi would have two stations, one for the Tokyo subway side on the east side of the elevated Yamanote line and Tokyo high speed rail would have small platforms located on the west. This meant that passengers wanting to continue their journey had to get off their train at Shinbashi station and go up a set of stairs above ground, then go down another set of stairs to get on the Tokyo subway platforms and vice versa. It was described as incredibly inconvenient at the time, but it was done this way because extra care was needed so as not to disturb the elevated Yamanote line tracks above. Several months later, the straight through concourse level was opened, which made it a little easier for passengers to transfer and direct connect services would commence eight months later on the 16th of September, 1939. The Tokyo subway platforms would become the passenger platforms at Shinbashi station and the Tokyo high-speed rail platforms would cease passenger service, only being used to stable trains at night. Today, passengers can catch a quick glimpse of the Shimbashi Phantom platforms when traveling up front near the driver's compartment and looking out the front window when traveling towards Asakusa. As the new decade rolled in, 
The 1940s represented war and a new era of government control. And on the 4th of July, 1941, the government formed a new company called the Tato Rapid Transit Authority, using the powers vested in it under the Wartime, Land, Transportation and Business Coordination Act. The new company would fully manage and integrate both halves of the line, effectively making Tokyo Subway and Tokyo High Speed Rail companies paper companies. And finally, in 1953, the subway line was officially named the Ginza Line to differentiate it from the Marinochi Line that would start operation in 1954. Okay guys, that was the Ginza Line, now for the time slip. In 1927, we see a street scene outside of Tawaramachi Station, possibly after an earthquake, as there seems to be a lot of rubble all over the footpath and road. And here we have the same scene today, with the metro slender curved staircase leading towards the underground. Again in 1927, we see the newly finished Weno station and its brickwork walls and curved platforms for all to see and use. And today we see the recently refurbished platforms that have undergone widening and received new marble facades. The 30th of December 1927 was a big day as crowds of people lined up for hundreds of metres to experience the subway for the first time. And today we see a widened renovated ramp style entrance that facilitates the disabled and people with prams entering the Ginza line. In the late 1920s we see the interior of the 1000 series rail car with its wood grain finish and plush green seats. Today the 1000 series has been commemorated with a replica being made and used for special occasions like the 90th anniversary in 2017. In the 1930s the area around Akihabara and Manseibashi is chaos with bridge building works going on and the Chuo Eastern Line in the foreground. Today we see a much orderly street as the streets and buildings around Akihabara have long been completed. In 1939, we see a rare photo of the Tokyo High Speed Rail platform in action at Shinbashi Station, which was only used for eight months until the two sections of the line were joined together. Today, the platforms haven't been used for passenger service for over 90 years, and are sometimes used to stable trains at night. In 1940, we see another rare photo of the 1000 series and the 100 series side by side on the third level platforms at Shibuya station. And here we see the same platforms today, which will be pulled out of service and demolished on the 1st of January 2020 as part of the ongoing revitalization works at Shibuya station. Sometime in the late 1950s, we see the 1000 series car 129 painted yellow and looking worse for wear. And today, car 129 lives on after being modified and restored as a museum piece at the Tokyo Metro Museum. And finally, the logos of the various companies that served the Ginza line over the past 90 years, starting with the Tokyo Subway Company with its T and its C logo, then the Tokyo High Speed Rail Company with its logo symbolizing a wheel and speed. Then the Taito Rapid Transit Authority logo, symbolizing a tunnel and a rail going into it. And again the Taito Rapid Transit Authority logo, updated from 1960 to the S-style logo, symbolizing the four S's of safety, security, speed and service. And finally, the all too familiar Metro heart shaped logo, which is used to inspire and remind the Tokyo Metro staff that they are serving the heart of Tokyo. Well. That's it for this episode guys, if you like this one please feel free to subscribe, I'm Mike and thanks for watching.